welcome to Flory Models live. Here we are, dead on three o'clock. Look at that for punctual. Makes a change. Uh, we are with you, or I'll be with you for the next sort of half an hour to an hour, however long we want. Pretty much because I can't keep away. If I'm honest, I've sort of got used to doing all the live stuff again. So originally wasn't going to do one today, but I thought we could have a bit of a run through and a catch up with some of the stuff that's been happening, obviously on the forum, some of the stuff I'm up to here, uh, and generally the direction that we'll be going in in the future. As always, though, it is Tuesday, so it is the Tuesday Q and A. So if you've got any questions at all, feel free to post them up in the live chat or put it up on the thread that's running up there for the today section, uh, actually on the uh, forum as well. It's a little bit more long-winded shall we say so usual thing trying to keep up with the chat room can be a little bit of a uh, a bit of a pain shall we say but anyway good afternoon to everybody considering this was a, a last minute thing there's loads of you in here so uh, that's very good anyway but it's nice to have you all on here so from my point of view if I just shove an overhead camera on uh, let's have a close-up one here so we've weathered in and done the cockpit in here now so this is all sort of done and ready so that's the actual cockpit section done there we've also done the front area as well so that is done and in like that so i'm going to put some various bits in here some maps and stuff like that on here as well we've got a merlin helicopter going overhead thank you <laughs> and then we've got the back area down in here again i will liven it up with some other bits so that's down in here. I've had a bit of a chipping nightmare down the back. Don't put uh, tape over oils because otherwise that happens. Okay, but that's in there as well. So that is all in and set and ready to go. Although I think that needs a bit of bending to get that upright. But there we go. That's all looking good down in there. And we've also done, I can pick it up, the rear gunners station area at the back so we've got the guns on there the ammo cans the various things we've got the wheel on the back and everything so really what that means now we are in a position to uh, grab the fuselage okay and then it will be just a case of daisy chaining this lot in so we've got this section will go in here so if we just do a quick bit of a live mock-up somewhat in here bearing in mind this is the first time i've attempted to mock this up at all so that goes somewhat down in there. Then we've got the forward cockpit that's going to come up in here. And obviously it all needs to be linked in. And then we've got the forward section that's going to come in here. Make the most of this because we'll never see any of this ever again. And then obviously we've got the rear part. So although this does come with full details, as you can see, right the way through this, we're not going to see any of it when it gets buttoned up. But we know it's down in there and it's all been done. We've got the top cockpit area as well. That's going to come in. And go through and make up the motions of it so far so good i have to say i haven't had a single problem uh with fit or anything else going down in there and stuff like that so actually it's all come together quite nicely down in there okay but there we go it is all nice there is a couple of things i'm not too sure about on it though like the gunner stations on the waist they seem to be parallel to each other i thought the g version they stepped them one opposing the other but it looks like these when you come in and you do sandwich these in here somewhat like this the the gunner station oops, is right diagonally opposite each other just like that which i thought one was stepped i don't know perhaps some of you guys who know a little bit more about these than me can uh, let me know if that is correct or not but i thought the g1 they stepped it but there we go that's all the sections all done now in place to say just a tiny little bit more to go on these and we'll be fine i've also been working on the chin turret so that's done down in here and all the other sections so it is hopefully pretty much going to be something like that so that's how that will run when it goes all the way down again it's really nice kit so far so good no problem so i'm just hoping that it's all going to fit in there still and we'll be good to go but as always just make sure when you're doing it you get your paint tolerance is all good so obviously we've got to allow we've got paint down in here we've got paint on those so it's better to use something like a world action glue just so it sort of melts them in and gives you a little bit more tolerances back in there i am going to do the bombs for it i thought i do use these as well as being a little bit of a tutorial on how to put the bands on bombs because i use o-rings uh, for doing that and things so i haven't done that one for a while and i don't think i've shown a close-up so we show about weathering and painting up bombs and stuff as a bit of a tutorial on that one but so far it's been uh, absolutely very good on there so we trust we're all good in there so all in there yeah very i have to say peter's doing a great job on his but just doing it straight out of the box and everything else i think that's really really nice job on that one 
Um, as I say, when I get around to mine, mine's going to be a little bit different to his, to be honest, because I'm going to be doing a different version uh, of it. So uh, it'll be a few little changes I need to make to my kit and various things. But yeah, I see Peter's just whacked his together and got the filler on the go there. So good luck with that one. Uh, apparently the late versions of the B17 have was stepped. Ah, right, okay, so that'll be it then. So that's why the difference. I thought it was just G's had it. Difference between the F and G was the gun ports staggered. Yeah, well, that's what I thought it was. But again, perhaps it was, this is, I think this is the early one. Is this? Yeah, this is an early production. Perhaps it's the late production. They staggered it uh, and went through that one. Uh, so very good. So I say, if anyone's got any questions, various bits and pieces like that, shout out now and I will uh, try and do my best to answer them or show you what is on there so first one up we got christian says hi phil watch part six the discovery and found the filter flat coat rapid thinner technique very interesting uh would you use this for aircraft as well uh, and if yes what color would you use it uh for an olive drab i'm guessing not white no definitely not white i probably wouldn't use that particular way on aircraft purely because it's very flat so what we're talking about, if you haven't seen it already, when I did the discovery, to give it a, an overall filter just to knock it down, because the reality is the, the, the original version, and if you haven't seen the original version of it, it's massive. The thing's 15 foot long. The engine section, I'm not joking, is bigger than this desk. The entire box thing is about this big, and it's like that wide. It's absolutely ludicrous, the size of this thing. But what they did was they gave it a really dead flat coat to give it that sort of space image. So I was just trying to recreate create that to have zero shine to it because spacey things don't tend to have uh, shine on them with these big starships things like that so that's what I was trying to create so what I did was I did a 50-50 mix of basically uh, flat coat uh, and then we did some white and then we thinned it very very heavily okay so then literally you end up with like a filter and then we just put a white one basically right the way over it and because you've got a mixture then of flat white paint in clear flat and then obviously with rapid drying thinners it gives a very very flat finish um, i probably wouldn't say use it on aircraft if you're on about using aircraft like if you were doing the b17g here and you're doing something along the lines of like the olive drab version for instance then i would probably come in with different shades of so obviously i would add because you're using green i want to lighten the green for instance i would add a little bit of yellow into the paint so you could make up a filter like that if you wanted to so obviously a lightened version and then just blow it right over but I certainly wouldn't put in there I don't think things like rapid drying thinners and use it as that because it will give a very very flat finish and the reality is or certainly from my point of view aircraft have more of a satin finish uh, to them even wartime birds and all the rest of it they have that sort of satin look unless you want to go for a really really warm down one uh, then you could obviously use that technique with it but I must admit I tend to lighten up uh, as an overall rather than picking out panels as well and stuff like that to try and give you that type of look with it uh, Question Phil have you tried to uh, Decal masks that are sold uh, on the PM store. Uh, I thought I might give them a go with the mozzie jets Yes, I've got them in here look Somewhere. You mean these ones So yes, and I have so I must admit I haven't actually used these properly in anger on a real model yet but I've done them as a demo there's a demo of these I actually did do a review on them when we first got them in so I have done them from that point of view uh, but to be honest with you I think they'll probably work just like everybody else's and obviously I've done custom ones Ron's done them for me before uh, and things like that and it'll work roughly the same way they're using really good high quality uh, tape so they use the old Kabiri tape which is basically Tamiya tape so I have no real things that, that it won't work it should work just the same so from that point of view I think you'll be absolutely fine with that one and we've got uh, Grant says I'm looking to do some wood effects using the brush and pigments uh, my plan is to use white spirit to create the effect would odorless thinners work the same way okay grant uh i don't understand about using brush and pigments i don't know that technique myself i just use oil um and that's what's on all of this this is pretty much as we were saying um if you're gonna come in and do this type of effect for wood so what i've done is i've gone for sort of you know a very fine grit because it's 172 second for doing this type of pigments and then obviously you can see it in here got a little bit of darker being a sort of plywood look 
um, you know this one in here as well uh, for this type of work so the easiest way for that is is one wait till Friday uh, and chances are because I show it uh, you know pretty much step, step by step how to do wood effect the thing is like I explained during the video of it is that when you're doing it on 132nd scale so if you're doing it on something like wingnut wings and bigger scales like it the grain is obviously bigger so you can get away and to be honest have I got a spongy bit or I've been do I tend to throw them as soon as I've used them but I use these which is it's just packaging from you know Aries cockpits and stuff like that and seats it's quite a, a medium density foam okay so literally you just put it on and rub it and just smear it all over the entire thing and then literally you streak it okay so that's great and that's fine for 132nd the trouble is when you want to come into here and you want to do something on this where it's a lot finer so 72nd scale wood you wouldn't have like giant you know sort of you know bits of uh, the actual effect of the wood grain into it so I use a, sp um, a brush and to be honest in fact again I think I'm very good at them out cleaning them out but I used um, a number six uh, these are the interactive brushes they're very soft so you just place it over once you put it all over with the sponge and then just brush it and then that way you can put them in and if you want to you can do the thing of like just go along stop and then carry on and you'll just um, you know put in tiny little differences in the grain of the wood uh, depending which way you want to go around so like the flight deck area in here is quite a darker wood I use darker wood for the radio room the actual tail one I'm thinking you won't get much wear and tear because there's only one guy going in and out you know it's not like they've got the rest of the crew going through it so then that one had it this one here is chipped off as I said to be honest I'm going to leave it because that's normally where the crew would sit for takeoff and landings and stuff so I'll probably overcoat it with some other stuff and again I might put some junky things in there as well just to make it look a little bit more interesting but as for pigments and that I must admit I just use oils I find oils really really straightforward very very easy to use on that one and okay so let me grab that one hello I'm currently building this is from David the de Havilland DH6 Tiger Moth He's got a build thing going on there, so I can't show it because it's on a different system to this one. Uh, I'm struggling to find reliable reference pictures for the reinforcement discs uh, on the wings. I see uh, see my pictures in the link. The reason I'm asking is I have 58 PE bits to stick on the wings. Uh, oh, that sounds like a barrel of fun. Um, uh, looks like Eddard remove uh, remove the page from the instructions. Nice. Uh, I think it would be due to add. Have you thought about just popping onto Eddard and see if they've got the original instructions? Yeah, they have all their instructions on their site. So you can go off and do that one, which is quite an easy way to do it. Um, that's probably the best way. I'll just click on your link on here. As I say, it's on a different system, so I can't see across. Uh, 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 uh. Hold on. Let me zip through try and find the parts good thing about using the um, um, thingy me jig uh, uh, blue tack to hold your photo etch parts that's a lot of photo etch going in in this one again it's a nice little model and it'll show it off beautifully okay uh, 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 uh. hold on hopefully it's at this page the one time I say set to rear okay right all right so these are quite actually big substantial discs on this one but they're huge um right okay so i i assume perhaps they're like their reinforcement or actually their inspection um holes for it you can see it probably quite pronounced on the real thing as well so yeah um again i would just look up for reference material of it but if not i'll try it at our own website um because they have their instructions all on there so perhaps they didn't print them and send them chances are the digital ones will still be there to show exactly where that should be um, on that one but good luck on that one looks absolutely fantastic uh, James says uh, hi Phil recently bought a quick connect with my Mac valve uh, I've been testing it out and it seems to have an air leak from the quick connection where it attaches to the airbrush uh, when the airbrush is angled at certain uh, places it's starting to leak is this uh, a fault or can it be fixed okay so sometimes um, <coughs> let 
like we said before, uh, so I'm trying to grab an airbrush, this one's full of paint, but okay, so the bit we're talking about is, oh, it's all right, it's dried out in here, it's fine, look, don't worry about that. Okay, so what we're talking about is when you come in, because this is the one you are probably in, sometimes if you wiggle it left and right, it releases air. It can be like we showed the other day with Matt's, because Matt's has got a really squared off funny end on his, where some of them are more rounded. So when I came in with Matt's and we clicked in, I couldn't get it to properly seat. So when you were moving like this, you would hear it hissing and, and things like that. So just make sure you've got the right end here for your actual Mac valve, okay? It, it could be a faulty one. I'm not saying it's not, but it may be just that not all of these are equal. So this this the quick release section here. It's this bit here. So you might have a different manufacturer for it. So it's not designed for both. So it may be worth, you know, just if you can find somebody who's got another one, just to test theirs onto it to see if it actually leaks. So you want it to be on there. So there is no, it doesn't wiggle anyway. You know, so literally when you, if you come in and you release it, it should, there you go, do that. So just to show you on a wider shot, it should come off uh, very cleanly. If you're doing it where you're having to pull it and trying to get it out, the chances are it's not properly designed for this one. And when it goes in as well, it should be a nice positive click. And the actual, the collar slides up. So when you come in and just, and it should be a nice solid, but very easy to come off as well. It shouldn't really be a problem, all right? So from that point of view, it might be just this bit needs changing out and not the other one, okay? Because sometimes, obviously, uh, Hudder and Steenbeck airbrushes do come with these, uh, and obviously the manufacturer I've got, it works fine with them, okay? But it may be a different manufacturer, so slight difference between the two, and that's why you're getting the air leak. So it might be worth trying another one of these, okay? Or it may be the actual Mac valve. So I don't know where you got your Mac valve from, but for the sake of a couple of quid, you could do literally just grab another one of these for this one, and then you'll be absolutely fine. And you know that it's got a nice positive click into it and all the rest of it, and you know, have a problem with it. Again, it's very difficult to know when you've got a faulty part, which bit it is, because it may be, you are quite right, and it has got a fault. I've never known one, but it could be, it's one of these isn't sitting correctly in here and it's not giving a nice positive click. But the big thing is, if it's got a good click and it's easy to come on in and out and all the rest of it, chances are, you know, it may be a faulty vac valve. If you've got it where it's pulling and you can't get it out properly and it's not clicking easily, you know, that's why you've got an air leak. It sounds like it's not seating correctly in here. Uh, as it goes through so just be one of those to have a look at uh, 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 hold on we've now jumped around a bit uh, uh, okay PE has a page but Eddard have oh, uh, sorry uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. sorry some of the guys are helping out down in here PA page is over, Eddard have now removed it. Well, why they removed it? Perhaps it wasn't correct. So might be worth shooting Eddard um, a message, just simply saying, is there an updated version? Uh, uh, there you go, John's got it. He'll send you a photocopy of it. So there you go, well done, Flory family. Congratulations, get a brownie point for that one. Uh, uh, Eddard deleted it from their website. I wonder if they've changed their minds. It's a very new part. Again, if Eddard have removed it, it may be that they've had feedback that it's incorrect and it's wrong. So that's why they've removed it. But again, I'm only speculating here. I don't know exactly. So it might be worth shooting them a message and saying, I see you've removed it. Is it going to be redone or sent? Was there a problem? You know, Eddard usually are pretty good. They tend to stick their hands up when things are wrong. So um, yeah, just uh, have a word with them and see what they come back with. I think it'll probably be the best thing. Uh, has anyone built the Trumpeter 172nd Lightning? Decent kit. It's, it's not brilliant. Trust me, the Airfix one's a lot better. Um, I've built it, not brilliant. Um, as I say, at that point, it was the only one, but Airfix now do a very nice 70 second one. So if you can do it, it's a lightning and it's fine. It's just, you know, a little bit old school uh, trumpeter, shall we say. Their 70 second stuff was never brilliant. 
Uh, Cameron says, hi Phil, I've got my first multimedia 148 scale Eddard Lysander. Quick tips regarding resin parts, as it's the first time I've been removing them and cleaning them, uh, the molding blocks. Uh, what is the best uh, glue to use regarding resin and styrene? Any pointers would be much appreciated. Uh, at the end of the day, we did a, a small little thing about this one, um, uh, about removing resin blocks and stuff like that anyway. It's one of those things, just take your time with it. Have a good look at the instructions first before you cut things off, because the trouble with resin, sometimes it can be a little bit vague, shall we say, where you're actually cutting, okay? And the big thing is with resin, once you cut too close, it's very hard to come back from it, okay? Because you end up either having to glue it on there or building up the areas again. So just have a look at the instructions. Normally they show you exactly where to cut, have a look at the part make sure you understand where that is and away you go good tools obviously are my two favorites okay so down in here you've basically got a razor saw so i've got some uh, cmk blades in this one which are fine blades or you've got this one which is literally the uh, tamiya uh, photo etch cutter so these are like photo etch sheets and you just bend and fold them and they go into a cutter. But this one's got a curve on it, so it's quite good. And it's got teeth all the way around the outside as well. So you can use it that way or that way uh, down into it. And again, it's just that thing about, you know, when you're cutting, especially if it's a thick bit coming in from one side, then the other, just making sure you either come down to a V okay so that way you can then just sand up the last bit because you don't want to go inwards into a v and take out too much okay so you just want to go in and again it's one of those things when you're removing parts and perhaps they've got uh, a thin piece uh, of a casting block with all the parts all along it and then coming in you can use side cutters which i've ever done with mine okay so and literally just cut them in them off one at a time but if you get one and it's got that little bit of flash that's running all the way through sometimes it's better to cut it off away from the part and then just gently trim up to it and come in with a knife and things like that as well when you're going through as for gluing it down to be honest being as it is with resin you've only got two options ca glue or like super glue crazy glue okay or you can use like an epoxy um like a three minute five minute epoxy resin you know you mix up the parts and you resin it in place be honest you don't need it ca glue works absolutely fine you can use pva glue and stuff like that as well but really you want something with a bit of bite okay that actually knocks it into place and do it photo etch exactly the same as well okay so when you're going in there you're going to be you know putting in um you know photo etch the same way either pva glue or with super glue onto it and then putting it onto there the big thing is obviously with all resin just be careful when you're sanding with it okay so when you're cutting off the bark and everything with the dust pile you've got get rid of it you know wet your desk get it out of the way and all the rest of it i think this day and age with us being very hygienic with washing our hands and all things like that but you don't want to be breathing it in so if you're sanding lots of it you go again i'll be honest with you i've got a belt sander with a massive disc wheel on it as well that goes into a hoover which has then got a sealed bag as well and it goes directly into that if i'm running so you often you might see me cheat uh, so I'll run over to it. So if I've got something with a massive casting block, I won't even mess around trying to cut it off. I'll just start fire up the belt sander, have the hoover, and I'll just take it clean off like that. And it's quick and easy way of doing it. Um, but again, a lot of people haven't got that. So just make sure you're doing, you know, health and safety first. Um, do, 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 uh, where are we? Um, dum, dum, dum. Uh, uh, a lot of you are talking about the instruments and things there. Phil is uh, letting paint dry in your Cully Cup, an essential technique to uh, airbrush perfection. Yes, because I leave that in there for weeks on end and go through. That's the power of lacquers. So the great thing with lacquers is, one, it doesn't leave thick, gooey paint in your Cully Cup because it evaporates normally to almost nothing. And secondly, it's a two-second job to clean it out. Uh, question with your flory washes would it be a good idea to seal them with gloss before using aptolug oils for additional weathering you can do you don't have to to be honest the washes are hard as nails they will absorb the thinners that you're putting in that's the only thing you have to be aware of but i do tend to use them with oils because what happens is the wash absorbs the linseed oil and it makes the oils dry a lot quicker so classic example when i was doing the um uh the uh discovery the xd1 uh it was just a case of just go straight over the top with it not worried about it at all the the thing is you have to remember once the washes are dry they're pretty tough 
They don't come off very easily. Even if you're brushing around with cold water on them, they still won't like coming off. So that's the thing. As soon as you get warm water to it, they rehydrate and just come straight away. But if it's cold, it's fine. Um, so sometimes I like to use them with it. The thing is, like David, I take it you're new to using the washes. Because you're new to using the washes, I would say seal it first. Okay, because that way you've just given yourself a bit of protection. When you understand the washes, you know how they work, you're pretty much indestructible with them. They'll be fine, no problem at all. Okay, but if you are new to them, I always say literally go in there, give them a wipe off, and you'll be uh, absolutely fine with that one. Uh, hello, Phil. I found uh, uh, glad I found this place, no problem, Arthur. Uh, I am new to all aspects of modeling. Uh, having watched uh, all of your tutorials, uh, thank you by the way. My first project I have is the 172nd Airfix Spitfire and plan to use your tutorials as a guide. You mentioned uh, just using the base color of a natural gray paint uh, instead of a primer uh, like Tamiya Acrylics. Is this true on larger projects as well? Absolutely. You know, we talk about often with primers, and I know a lot of people are saying they've got trouble with primers, peeling and stuff like that. I saw that one earlier about it. And it is, it's one of those things where sometimes old school just works really, really well. So what you could do, if you've got like Tamiya paints there, something like XF19, which is basically a light gray, just use that as a primer. It'll be absolutely fine. And it'll do the job of pretty much any other surface primer out there. The only difference purely between a proper primer and gray paint you know is that a proper primer sometimes has better gripping capabilities onto plastic obviously photo etch uh, and resin and stuff like that so it should grip a little bit better than normal paint does but when you we're talking about uh, Tamiya acrylics which are obviously a lacquer based when you're talking about guns uh, acrylics as well they're aqueous colors they're you know technically alcohol based as well it's not like a true acrylic okay so what we mean by that is because it's got that alcohol into it it's got a little bit more bite to the surface you're going over but all of that said if you've got a particularly slippery uh, plastic you're going on i.e and i think this may be some of the things that are coming up as well is uh revels plastic can be quite shiny i think you know it just got nothing to hold on to it's got nothing physically to grip to and then as i say different people different tapes um, I'm pretty convinced nine times out of ten when people talk about obviously uh, paint peeling if you look at where it's peeling it tends to be where you're holding it and I think sometimes you've got this situation where even though paint's dry and it's been dry for a couple of days if you're holding it okay and then you know you come away the temperature of your hand has heated up the paint a little bit as well so you've almost sort of really welded it in and to be honest with you i can't get let go because i'll lose my position on here the reason this is peeled is where i was holding it and that's because i've used oils as well it doesn't help but literally i was put tamiya tape and i was holding it right there and i held it there that's why both of those have gone i know why it's done it it's annoying but actually i'm going to go with it it looks quite cool uh, but yeah, but no, definitely for anything at all, you don't have to run out and buy expensive primers. You can just use a neutral color. And when we talk about using gray, the only reason we say about using gray is because it is neutral. So it's easy to cover with any other colors. But if you were doing something red or orange or yellow, then I would say use white because white is a lot easier to cover than it is gray. Uh, and then again, if you were using silvers, I'd say you're about using black because it's just really, really easy to see how much paint you've got on there first. Uh, uh, Cameron, watch Phil's build is 190. Yes, as I say, there's loads and loads of builds. In fact, my older builds use a lot more resin because back on the older builds, there wasn't as much decent parts. Nowadays, they're pretty good uh, model kits right out of the bat. But I'd say, have a, a look at the FW190. That's probably a good one because they're in stages. So it's just all about the cockpit. It's all about working with photo etch with the flaps. That's all it is uh, in those. Harry, is it safe to sand resin? Yes, of course it is, but think about it. Use common sense. You don't want to be breathing that stuff in. So do it outside, okay? Do it with a respirator on. Do it in front of your extraction unit whilst you're sanding as well, so the fibers are being pulled off. It's the fibers going in the lungs, and I'm not gonna go down. In fact, I'm gonna give up talking about paint at this rate, because no matter what I say, I'm wrong. But all I will say is, as I happen to know somebody who is very, very much knows all about this stuff. 
any type of particles you're breathing in, it doesn't matter if it's resin, if it's lacquer thinners, if it's acrylic thinners, if it's, you know, technically styrene dust, anything going in your lungs is bad. It doesn't matter what it is, they're all bad. So you honestly, just think about it when you're doing it. Don't be breathing this stuff in if you don't have to. So if you can't do any of that, just do it by a window uh, and get out there. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, hi George, Ed had a really good customer service, that's what I mean, just go and have a word with them. Uh, resin's nasty stuff, don't breathe it in, absolutely. Uh, question Phil, uh, what Hitaka or lacquer paints would you recommend for REF colours uh, for a 148 scale Tamiya F4F Wildcat? Uh, I want to build one shortly. Again, to be honest with you, I've used Hatakas. I used Hataka colours on my Hunter. Uh, and to be honest, I use Hatakas pretty much on everything recently uh, and have no problem with it at all. I like all of their colours. So yeah, I would say Hatakas, um, if, obviously if you haven't got one, uh, if you're doing uh, the Wildcat 48 scale, they do the Fleet Air Arm colours. Uh, I think they do a box set for it. Obviously, I haven't got my cohort with me today, uh, but best basically have a look at that one because sometimes they do a set. So if you haven't got any of their paints, you can just grab a set and it'll have everything in there. If not, just go through the color ones. They do all the colors. They're fine with all of them. And to be honest, out of those colors, I haven't seen a bad one yet. Uh, do, 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 do. What else we got? Uh, perfect. Thanks for the tips. Uh, as I say, Cameron, get a, a razor saw is actually one of those things. We often talk about, you know, obviously tools. What's an essential? What are luxuries? And what is just over the top? Okay. A razor saw is pretty much just past your essentials. Okay. Because it's really, really handy thing to have. Because you can do it for other things as well, like cutting just plastic if you made a mistake or you want to open up parts and things like that. So a fine tooth saw is really, really good. There's lots of different ones out there. Obviously, some of them are a little bit cheaper than others. Um, you know, uh, GLC make that one that I've got here. I've got CMK Ballades in it now just because I'm um, cheap and they're cheaper and you can buy them in a pack of 10 or whatever it is so that's why i do it um, do, 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 do. david says phil use your washes only once okay so until you get a bit of a feel for them once you've used them a couple of times most people who use my wash use it for a pin wash to start with and then after a couple of tries they're thinking you can do anything with it and that's the truth so it's one of those things once you get a bit of a feel for it and you understand the wash better um, then you can just go on and that's when you often you know I had somebody the other day to be honest who was saying I ruined their model I don't know how I ruined it I never touched it but um, because he put my washes on his model and then it welded onto it purely because he had seen somebody not even me put the washes over a dead flat finish because he wanted a really worn look to it and then he sanded the washes off and to be honest it probably looked fantastic but he tried it and then it just stuck to his model two things one he put the washes on about four hours after he painted it so that was the first problem okay but secondly it's because it's on a textured finish if you're putting it on a textured finish you are going to have a weathered model there's no ways around it okay but it's all to do with the the two things to remember is is the surface you're going on okay and the smoothness it's going on as well it's all very well we're going on a flat finish but how flat is your flat are we talking flat but it's still silky smooth to touch are we talking flat where it's like sandpaper you know so again you've got that little bit of wiggle room in there and that's why i always say for anybody who wants a weathered finish put it over a satin finish it's got enough to grip and hold on to it and then that way it just depends on how wet your cloth is to take it away if you're doing it a dry cl cloth it will give it a really warm look you make your cloth nice warm and wet it will take it all off again okay but again that then goes down to flat but it's that thing the more you use it the more you really get a appreciation of what it can do um doo -doo -doo, phil uh what was it uh you used on the ring on the aircraft to keep the line uh in the right place hold on i've got to think uh sorry uh what was it you used sorry the rigging sorry you've got ring uh ringing on aircraft to keep uh it in the right place okay so i take it you mean the i'm just trying to think of what you mean do you mean on the like the gladiator and stuff like that that was photo etch so i used um turnbuckles but then i turned them to make them work for me so i used a turnbuckle and bent it 90 degrees and stuck that to the model so basically it ends up with a bit sticks up 
and that way you can just hook the line onto it and then that way away it goes so instead of the turnbuckle being like you know one holes eyes at each end i just had one eye sticking up so that way one part sticks down but got the eye sticking up you wrap it around the eye originally i was trying to thread through the eye but that was taking forever so i ended up just hooking it onto that photo bit so really think about it as the the turnbuckle is still technically doing it but instead of it being two uh, parts i'm just using one of it so that's why i cut all the turnbuckles in half and then you just stick one down and then obviously you hook onto it just like that and it just makes things a lot easier uh david uh thanks for the help on the tiger moth enjoying the build so far uh, it's the first time i've posted on the forum uh so i'd like to get it right <laughs> without becoming a rivet counter and again the thing is i you know i've been doing with this thing i've been using the uh eddard's call out for all the photo etch but i've taken no notice of it because i'm not using it so all i've been doing is because you're not going to see much in here is using usual thing all the parts i can use uh, that i think are going to be seen so classic example as you can see i've got all of this untouched okay and to be honest i've got all of these on here so i've used what i think you're going to see and do and the rest of it so don't think you have to use every last bit you know it's all up to you how you want to do it uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. uh phil my gloss coat has been curing for four days uh so no worries there thanks absolutely well if you're doing it over gloss you're going to end up with a pin wash so you'll be absolutely fine no problem with that at all hi phil i've airbrushed your washes uh and you get some fantastic subtle effects yes i must admit i it's one thing i always do with armor so with armor what you can do is just airbrush it on thin it a little bit airbrush it and leave it and because of armor the way it is and it all falls south anyway as i call it so all the runs and the streaking it does it all on its own you don't even have to touch it so it's great uh afternoon to philip uh, uh, uh so spraying the air if you want to spray with the wash just spray it it's fine literally down to a 0.15 uh, needle size but honestly anything two two and three four uh 0.4 mil will be absolutely fine for spraying the wash you don't have to thin it either you can just put it down neat but i think if if you're doing armor it gets all caught up in everything you can't get it off because it's in amongst everything so i always put down a thin coat so thin it with a little bit of water add a tiny little bit of um, detergent dishwater soap washing up liquid into it just to help break the capillary action so obviously the more you thin it the less likely it is to flow uh, and then that way you just spray it on that way it doesn't bead up otherwise if you spray it on and it's too thinned with water it just beads up and doesn't look like flow uh, and you can just leave it just to get onto it literally like that and it works very very well here we go that was a quick fire question round for half an hour <laughs> right okay so what i thought we would do is uh pop over into the forum let me move that out of the way because you guys don't need to see that actually i'll go over there today okay and uh have a quick look round in here so obviously the group builds and sigs i know a lot of people are saying they have been sort of sidelined uh, a little bit over the last few weeks and that's purely just because obviously with the entire covid thing doing the live shows and all stuff like that it's all gone a little bit out of the water uh, as you can imagine but they are still ongoing a um, couple of things just to point out because people are asking about what's happening and stuff like that if you go on to the group build chat uh, this is just where we would talk about obviously what's happening for the year the schedules and various things so this is the 2020 schedule um i don't know why that one's in there sorry that's uh andy is talking in there uh, okay but down in here we've got obviously this uh year's list so obviously some of them have obviously finished already okay other ones are still going so obviously the mig one's done and dusted and things like that but we've still got ones but that's it so down in here we've got uh shelf of doom dog of a kit became a sig uh type of thing that's going on at the moment okay but obviously the big one that's going to be starting shortly uh we'll say shortly in a couple of months time is the action movie group build always a popular one we have it every sort of five or six years or so um so again that's the one that's going on i'll be starting soon we are going to be very relaxed on it so you can go with that one okay sig 2 at the moment we've got um uh bolster berlin which is basically ending world war ii in europe okay that one going down in there and then obviously we've got the various things going down in here again a lot of it has all moved around just a little bit purely because of uh the way the world is okay and then if we just pop down to the others 
Uh, down in here, obviously, we've got the uh, Latin uh, group build, which is the first proper group build, which gets a medal and all the rest of it. Okay, so you've got basically to the 30th of June to finish down in there. So if we just have a look at some of the reveals, because we haven't seen these for a while, because of everything going on. We've got uh, Ian, uh, got the Curtis Wright Falcon. Let's go back. In, that's Uruguayan markings. I know because I've built one. Very nice indeed. Nice cheeky little kit. See something a little bit different. The whole point sometimes is when we do these group builds is to you know really put out there to get the old creative thinking as well and to perhaps build something you've never done before. Uh, Alan's done down in here. We've got a little Sky Raider. All finished. Nice Argentinian one there. Beautiful little aircraft. Great little aircraft. Very nice indeed. Some great work down in there. Congratulations on that one. And what else we got? God, trouble with these. I've got, I can't pronounce all these things. So uh, Max done the special hobby. 70 seconds. Uh, yeah, one of them. I think it's Honduras, so we'd be all right. Very nice indeed. Again, something really, really different. And that's the nice thing about you. We're saying you end up building stuff like this in colours perhaps you've never used before, or in camos that you never thought about doing before, uh, or anything else like that. So that's what's really, really nice about doing these group builds that are a little bit out of everyone's standard comfort zone. Because let's face it, we can all just turn around and do a spitfire or an f-16 but it's really nice sometimes to push yourself to try and do something that perhaps we're not quite used to doing or dealt with before u-boat colombian navy has he got drugs on board <laughs> different type of boat there we go from david again very nice complete with crew look at that tiny little thing very very nice indeed Good job on there. Again, see, things you'd never see. Who would have thought? Colombian sub. Okay, uh, we got P47 from Frederick. Very nice. Right, which one's this one? It's a Brazilian one. Just checking. I can't remember the markings. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Congratulations. And let's just do a couple more. Uh, Airfix is um, Skytrain C47 or the Dakota. Okay, so from Ian. Look at that. Beautiful. To be honest, I thought we were going to see loads of Dakotas. Uh, purely because a lot of them went to that part of the world. Very nice indeed. Very cool. Something about a DAC, isn't it? You can't go wrong with a Dakota. And now I'm not going to just suddenly run out and buy a massive. Uh, resin one okay trumpeter Cessna has the dragonfly isn't it I think they call it uh, this is from Joe and this is the Colombian one very nice indeed again beautiful work very sharp details on this thing again beautifully done nice camo work as well congratulations okay one more uh what do we got skyhawk sorry this is the gripen sorry js39 from kitty hawk there you go now that's camo you don't normally see them in nice job on the kit as well because this kit let's face it can be a handful but again this is a classic example of kitty hawks Let's face it, your only other option you've got is the Italieri uh, 48th, which again is a prototype version. It's probably nothing like the real thing. So uh, it's nice to actually see one of these done. Nice bit of weathering on that one as well. Cool looking jet. Very nice indeed. So again, it's that nice thing. You've got all the surface detail and beautiful stuff that you find on there with uh, Kitty Hawk just a handful to get it together but you definitely nailed that one 
So there we go. So some great work going down in there. Well done everybody who's completing on those ones. As I say, you've got a little bit of uh, time left on there. So it's not tons until we uh, move through. Hold on, we just come back out. There we go. So with that one, you've basically got until the end of June. All right. So you've got what, five, six weeks? And then that one's done. So good going with that one. Let's say it's sick that's currently running at the moment, which basically can wait. We started off on the beaches to the bulge. Now we've gone from the bulge to Berlin. Okay, that's where my B17 is fitting in as well. So that's where I'm doing this particular uh, build for. So we've got various ones going on in there at the moment. So we've got 54 on the go. And we've got two oh, finishers already, which is mad going. This has only just started. So we have James. He's done down in here, the Joseph Stalin 2. Sorry, whose kit was this one? This is the Tamiya, 48 scale. JS2. Nicely done. Beautiful work. Nice subtle weathering on that one as well. I like that one. Very nice indeed. Congratulations. And we've got a Pershing from James as well, he's been very busy. Very nice, very cool. So congratulations on finishing those, beautiful work. Remember, put up all your details as you can as well, just like uh, James has done there, so we get some nice details off of those. Okay, so down in here on the COVID work, again, we're gonna run this one, I think till the end of june as well that's when we'll call this one okay it's totally informal anything sort of goes with this particular one as we know all right so final reveals down in here we've got 82 finished so lots going on there so we've got an airfix beagle from david look at that very nice classic old school Very nice indeed. Congratulations, David. And uh, Jaguar, Airfix Jaguar, 72nd from Kenny. Look at that. Classics. Very nice indeed. The, the original box as well. Cool. Proper box art in the can openers. Though. Very nice. Okay. And we've got uh, from Lee. It's the fairy rotodyne. See, whatever happened? It was going to be the future. Then it sort of was again for a bit, wasn't it? I can't remember. What was it? Which one did it? There was a like a black hawk type thing running around like this config for a while. Now it's got the big pusher on the back. There we go. Action shot. Very nice. See, light years ahead of its time. Interesting photos as well. Flick the blades and hope they stay on. Very nice indeed. Cool work. And we've got, my lord, does that say frog? Nigel's built a frog. 70 second Spitfire. See? Nothing wrong with it. Canopy might be a bit iffy with them, but definitely the shape certainly looks like a Spitfire to me. Very nice. The old classics. And it's got a shark's mouth, so extra bony plus points. Do we know when that kit was released? Okay, so what else have we got? A Tamiya 48 scale, Mitsubishi Zero. There we go. Very nice in flight. Okay. Nice job on that one. Very cool. Very nice indeed. Nice work with the old Razor Rivet sets as well. There you go. Very good. Nice work, Alexander, on that one. Beautiful job. Okay. Into some of the fun stuff, because don't forget, this actually uh, was at the same time as the technically the Easter sig 
There they are. Very nice indeed. With tanks in the back. <laughs> there you go. I think I prefer the Meng ones to the Hasegawa <laughs> egg planes because they just take it to a whole new level. Very nice indeed. Very, very cute. Well done, Dave. Uh, Hasegawa F16A. Oh, I think we looked at this one last time, so we're up to date with this one. As you can see, just showing really an older kit, but very, very nice. Still scrubs up, still holds its head up high, even after all the Tamiya releases coming out and everything else like that. Very nice. Very cool. Very nice indeed. Oh, wrong one. We're on full screen today. There we go. So yes, are we all good? Very good. Very impressive, everybody. Remember, don't stress out with them. Plenty of time left on these ones. Same thing with all the group builds and SIGs. Never rush them through or anything else like that. Take your time with them. Enjoy them and you'll be absolutely fine. So that's it. So there we go. That is about it for today. I think we're all good, unless anyone else has got any other questions. Um, I'm hopefully, now we're to this stage, uh, I've got the chin turret section all done as well. Hopefully going to get this thing buttoned up later this afternoon. So that would be nice. So obviously we can band that one up. And then whilst that's drying and going off, I'm going to be starting to chop the first parts off of the actual uh, VC10 going on with that. I was sort of hoping some of the bits that I've got coming in for it might have turned up today. And I was going to show you, but hopefully they'll be in tomorrow. And I can show you some of the stuff I've got for that one as it's starting to filter through with the parts we're going to be using, thinking about on the stand. I know I'll be working obviously with the guys as well because they're going to be doing some in tow so uh, some thirsty birds that will want feeding off of this thing as well so mine's going to be in flight so we're going to be doing an in flight air to air refueling type setup with that one as well so we're making our way through so thank you very much for joining me this afternoon An absolute pleasure as always remember happy modeling take care stay safe and i will see you tomorrow afternoon with matt where we'll be on i think we're doing three till four for the actual uh, uh p m kit show so i think matt's got some new kits coming in or hopefully have some new bits that turned up today so we can show on there as always as we make our way through so happy modeling take care and i'll see you soon bye